I was amongst the first few designers in India to make a switch from Sketch to Figma for all the personal as well as professional designs. In these four years, I have used a lot of shortcuts, hacks, plugins to make my designs better as well as faster. In this video, I want to share seven Figma tips that will increase your productivity 10x in Figma. Have you created those dashboards or list views where all your entries look the same, every single avatar is the same, name is the same, and you just have two options, either to look unprofessional and not change them at all, or spend a lot of time in changing each one of them individually. I want to show you how can you do it with a single plugin within a minute in just a few clicks. So let's get started. So here you see all the names are the same, all the patient IDs are the same, payment and everything is the same. So here's what I want to do. I want to just select all of these and I've opened this plugin called Content Reel. I'll just say I want to change the full name. You just see in just one click, I have changed the name of every single person and all the names are different here, if you can see. And similarly, you can change images, patient ID or anything. And this is going to be a huge time saver and you will come across as a hero in your entire team because you show what the real interface is going to look like not with dummy data and you will thank me for it. More often than not, when we design some screens, it looks something like this. And we might know where it starts, where it ends, but others who are looking at the file don't. So here I'm sharing a particular plugin that is going to help you create the sense out of these screens. So just look at this. So I have all these screens here where I can't find out where it starts, where it begins, what all these screens are. And now that I have used a plugin, which is called Autoflow, I've just sort of identified that, hey, if I click on this, I have to go, go to this particular screen. This plugin is very helpful if you are creating bigger flows, right? So you can connect multiple screens out of this. So here's how it works. So I'll just go here, I'll zoom in. I'll say that, hey, if I click on search, this thing should open up. So I'll just use a plugin called Autoflow, which is here. I'll just select I'll wait for it to load and I'll just select the search thing and connect to the screen where I have to connect it. So for example, this, now I've got an arrow which start from search and goes to that particular screen. I can similarly do it for, let's suppose if someone clicks on this user's profile, I have to take them to this screen. And if you want to take it just one level up, you just create a rectangle with black background, write the text that, hey, on clicking the user profile, you'll go to the user profile and that makes it dumb proof. Before we talk about this step, I want to tell you one simple thing that we all designers do. We create so many frames on the Figma file and in the end forget about naming them. And this essentially is even bigger problem if you're creating presentations in Figma. And what happens is they just like, you know, say presentation one, two, it doesn't look that good to us. And I have a solution to this. I have been using a plugin to solve all these problems for me and it's called enumerator. So let's see how this works. So consider that I have these many slides in my presentation and I'm about to give a presentation and all these slides have a problem. First of all, they are not evenly arranged. And second, they all have the literally same name pro app session, right? I want them to be named like one, two, three, four, five. So so that I have a series or a structure to it. Let me show you how I'll do it. So one of the plugins that I've been using quite a lot is called Enumerator and this is how it works. So I'll select all the frames that I want to rename. I'll just go to plugins. I'll say Enumerator and I want to start from one. I want to just call it Pro App 1 and similarly Pro App 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just see. So everything has been turned into Pro app one till like, you know, pro app 28. This really helps me when I have a lot of screens to work with and I have not paid attention to renaming them. And just last second, I have to just rename all of them. It is going to take at least 15, 20 minutes to make those changes. If I'm talking about, let's say 50 slides. So this particular tip is for all that last minute thing that you're looking for to rename everything so that you don't look unprofessional at all. We have often been in a place where we have a perfect icon size or the font size. Now, for some reason, you had to scale it, the text or the entire component, and it just goes in decimals. You can't fix it for all the design again because it is going to take you hours to fix every single screen. How can you do it? This is what you can do. Okay, I have this component which is over here. So everything is here in numbers. There is no decimal thing here. What if I just want to scale it for some reason and this can happen with an icon as well. Here you see, I've made it 376.59. The text became 303.11. 
here the thing became 303.11 this is a very bad place to be in and if your developers see it they'll definitely come bashing you because how do we make a 0.11 pixel they'll ask you sarcastically so here's how you fix it in one click you click on this there's a plugin called round all so let me make this your selection and voila if you see this has been converted into a 377 thing so no decimals at all and now you can just as well hand it over to your developers you can do the same for any sort of images icons text anything that pleases you in this tip i want to share one of my favorite plugins and this is called remove background or remove bg plugin it removes the background from the foreground and you can create amazing avatars using this let's see how it works so let's say i have got this new image and i just will go to plugins remove background i'm just going to run it uh it's running you might have to go to their website and get the api key for the first time of setting it up but after that you're good to go so here i have just used the plugin and as you can see the background has been removed so this is how it works i hope all those images where you wanted to remove background and you have used all the online tools you can just do it directly from here so in this tip i'll show you how to swap things around how to increase the space without messing with pixels height or anything of that sort so let's consider this frame i have six identical items here if i go here and here and i want to replace the pink and blue ones i see these like you know pink things Given that you have all the components at the same level, which means that I have all of these in the same frame, I'll be able to swap these without like me knowing how much distant it was because it's just going to remain the same. I've just swapped the position of two things, right? This saves you a lot of time because you don't have to actually know how much the spacing was to actually make it just like that or align things. It will just swap. Also, if you are looking to increase the spacing between, let's say, two items, I can select all three and just click on this and drag it out as much as I want it. And like, you know, as I'm doing it, this will happen for the other one as well. Have you faced this, that you have multiple tiles to put pictures in and you have to put all of them one by one in this tip? I'll show you a shortcut that will save you two to three hours every single month just by importing pictures and putting it in the every single rectangles. So let's go. So what I'll do is I'll just select this. I'll press command shift and K here to like, you know, open the folder. I've selected these four. I'll open it. I'll just put one, two, three, four. See, all these images are different. I've used one folder where i have put all the images and you can just by clicking one by one on every single tile where you want to put it you can put all of these you don't have to go again back to the explorer and bring every single image and put it in the frame in this step i want to share how to create progress bar in figma i've already created some examples for you guys to see how the final output is going to look like so i'll create a circle here you can go here in the top bar and select the oval from here i just press o key now i'm just shift and dragging it out so i've created a circle right here now i'll just pick this arc take it slightly to the bottom i'll just take this ratio thing out based on like how much you like the width of the progress bar you can keep it like that and now i'll just make a copy of it so this will act as our background and this will just take the thing here. Now I'll just take it here. I'll just switch it to the other side and this will be our progress. I'm just keeping it 70, let's say 75%. So that will be our progress. Uh, also, you can see here I have rounded the like, you know, progress bar thing here. So I'll just go here in the corner radius. I'll make it, let's say uh, 175 and what? why 175? So your number should be essentially like you know more than whatever the width is half of the width is so you can keep it anything it's as long as it's more than half the width of the stroke it's fine so i'm just gonna give it a color and i'll just write the text in the middle which says 75 percent here make it a little smaller and there you go your own progress bar in figma without using any sort of plugin so those were the seven tips that will help you 10x your productivity in figma if you like the tips do mention your favorite tip in the comments below do like share it with your friends so that they can increase their productivity as well and we'll be back with the next video super soon till then happy designing